Welcome back to another episode of Excalibur CCG TV's Talking Comics. We're your hosts. I'm Randy. I'm Mark. And we're here to talk about the new books that will be on the shelves for Wednesday, June 6, 2018. D-Day. Yeah, because comic books are on there. <laughs> they brought them with them. <laughs> they brought them with them. Um, that's weird. That ties into another. Oh, yeah, that's There's weird. all kinds of weird stuff on my side today tying in together. Look at this. It's it's like a, like a spider web. It is. Just uh, don't show me the spider. It makes a web that size. <laughs> that gets a little scary. Um, if you don't know how to get to our location, guys, we have two different spots you can find us. We, we are in Shreveport, Louisiana. That's where the two of us are. Or you can go up to our Texarkana, Texas location. You can find directions or the phone number to either of the locations on our website, ExcaliburCCG.com, or our Facebook page, which is just the name of the store. So, and I promise I'm going to get the podcast back going. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. I just, I got to work with the guy on that, but I completely, that was my fault. I brain farted and forgot about it. It's it's and I'll, all work in progress. Yeah, I'll get it back going. No, well, I mean, I guess it's a rush for some people, but it's happening. So that's some good news. Twitter, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I'm anything not, about I'm not, Twitter. I'm not familiar with. I uh, need to actually go to our Twitter thing and see if it's still relevant. Yeah, <laughs> the last things from like 2000. Guys, 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 guys. All right, um, we had the one big announcement that we're going to keep promoting for the next yep. couple of months here. Yes, that sir. is the Geek Con. That's right, 2018 version. That's right. It is happening on August 17th through the 19th. So that Friday through Sunday. Yep. We don't have Friday tickets. No, we only have Saturday and weekend. Weekend passes. That's so. Right. Uh, come into the store now up until very shortly Close. before yeah. the actual event happens there. Usually a week or so before we have until. Right. Uh, that was, I don't know if things have changed because they're not through Ticketmaster now, but. Um, oh, that's true. We might be able to have them longer. But we may have them up till. I don't know. Uh, it all just depends on what the big man and uh, GeekCon people decide. So. Um, Saturday's $20, weekend's $25. So. And there are tons of deal. fun guests there. Yeah, they got a lot of good, and they actually got a good comic guy this time too. So it's kind of a complete show this year. That's right. Um, we can it can only, well, I mean this this is a good rounded schedule or, or group of people yeah. there. Uh, I yeah. I just hope that they continue with the comic book guests. I hope they do too. That's what when they come in here and ask us what we want. That's that's our first thing we say. Because we want you guys guy. to be able to take the books that you buy at our store or wherever else and get them signed. Get them signed. Meet the people that created the books you love. Exactly. So um, that is that, that's our main goal with it. Um, moving on, lots of comics. Yes, lots of comics this week. And I'm going to let you start off with uh, Marvel is now in complete, full, number one. Yeah. Cranking out new creative teams, you know, yep. machine gear going. They are going hard and heavy. Uh, the first one, this is actually a mini series. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't guess this ties into the movie. Anyway, Ant Man and the Wasp, number one of five. Mark Wave, Javi Garan, uh, the creative team, David Nakayama with the covers. Uh, this is a new series, but a mini series. Wasp was just trying to help Ant-Man get home to Earth to see his daughter, but a little problem got in the way. Very little. <laughs> Subatomic, in fact. S. Scott Lang was lost in the vast spaces between atoms. I hate when that happens. All the time. All the time. Uh, now, Nadia is his only hope of rescue, so this is not tying into the movie. This is regular Marvel characters. If only he would listen long enough for her to save them. So, new little miniseries, Ant-Man and the Wasp, relevant because of the movie, but not the same characters really as the movie. I think getting caught in between Adams is, is very similar to like when you're asleep and you have to go to the restroom and you like try to sit down when the toilet seat's up and you know, you're caught. <laughs> 
I can't get out. I need my little buzzer thing. Really big glimpse into Randy's life. <laughs> it's it's never actually happened, but it'd be funny <laughs> if it did. I, I would have to laugh. If it it did. would, yeah. I'd probably break the damn toilet. <laughs> I haven't done that before. Ooh. Sad to say. Charlie has broken the toilet before. He, he like <laughs> tripped over the cat or something and broke the, the back of the toilet. That's kind of crazy. That is crazy. Uh, um, up from DC Comics, we have the second of the Prelude to the Wedding books. This no is, toilets. As far as we know. As far as we know. This is Batman Prelude to the Wedding, Nightwing vs. Hush. I'm not going to say number one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Tim... What's that? Is this the first time Hush has been in the Rebirth? I, As far as I know. Or has he been in one of them before? I, I, as far as I know, I haven't seen his name in any of the solicitations. Uh, Tim Seeley and Travis Moore, the creative team, Raphael Albuquerque, giving you a beautiful cover. Uh, Dick Grayson has had a lot of responsibility being the original partner of Batman. He's the natural choice of Bruce Wayne's best man. Clark Kent may argue a little bit about yeah. that. Uh, so if anyone has to get to the wedding, it's going to be him. Too bad Hush has other plans, and maybe Bruce Wayne does too. If it was the 70s, you know Joker would be the best man. Absolutely. For some reason. he would Chum. Be chum, that's right. Absolutely. And I want the mustache underneath the paint. <laughs> <laughs> Cesar Romero. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to stick with Marvel here. And um, the one... I think I this is a one-shot. It should be a one-shot because there's no reason to have it an ongoing. Um, this is Dazzler X Song number one from uh, Magdalene Visaggio, Laura Braga, and Elizabeth Torque doing the cover. Um... The Brooklyn punk scene has never been cooler with Dazzler's brand new band taking center stage. I think the Ramones probably would have had something to say about that. Right. But, uh, but while she's trying to, to find herself and reconnect to the one thing she's always loved, I didn't know punk rock was what she Okay. Dazzler stumbles upon a truly toxic part of the underground punk scene. When a new and violent gang threatens the young inhuman fans that follow her from venue to venue, Dazzler may have to turn to... <sighs> so, I don't know what that's about. I'm confused. <laughs> so, is it about punk? I, I don't know. Because they only mentioned that four or five times. Um, um, punk, and, and now she's just got inhuman fans. I, she, but it's X song. Right. I'm, I don't know. That sounds like a mess. The, the thing that confuses me it. is that they went from her being the disco yes roller, roller disco yeah. girl to now she's going, well, we need to modernize, or what can we modern? Let's do punk. Well, punk isn't really... Um, punk was like 70s. Yeah, it's the same time as disco. So, yeah. So uh, I'm, it's it's a bit weird. I mean, even the, the punk that came... The underground punk, like that, especially. Is, yeah, but I mean, like, the, the Green Day and all that stuff's is. already passed. Green Day's not punk. I, I know, but the stuff that they'll consider, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. passed. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I would have... Schlepp Rock. I, I don't know what they would have called. Uh, I don't know what that book is, but buy it. Go ahead and buy it read it, and you tell me what it's about. Dazzler. That's Dazzler, that's the thing. Yes. She's got fans. Um, <laughs> this guy has some fans also. Deadpool, number one, he Marvel Comics, as well. Yeah. Scotty Young will be your writer on board. He is not drawing it. Okay. Well, um, that should be kind of fun because I hate Fairyland's pretty wacky. Right. Uh, the artist and the cover artist is Nick Klein. Uh, this is called Merkin for a Living. Everybody's Merkin for a Merkin for a Living. All right. He was the, uh, Craziest, te uh, these guys are going to bring you the craziest tales of the regenerating degenerate yet. It's been a while since Deadpool's had to murk to make ends meet, but things are tough all over. While Deadpool tries to get his humble mercenary for hire business back off the ground, a catastrophic uh, threat so unfathomably huge, that's not an easy word to say, uh, so mind-breakingly cataclysmic that it defies description, yeah, although they just kind of described yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's heading for Earth, and there's only one person who can stop it. And uh, Oh, no, wait. It's not Wade, is it? Oh, 
squiggly mark. Dollar sign. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It's Wade. It's Wade. <laughs> so, it's not necessarily a merc job, as far as I'm concerned, unless he's someone, I guess, hires him to destroy whatever it is. Okay. But I, I think they are going for, you know, Jerry Duggan has moved on to telling the big stories now for Marvel. Yeah, he's, he's doing the Infinity Wars. Yeah, he which... is their big main person, I guess. Yeah. And so, they're looking for someone that can tell zany stories, and as far as Scotty I hate Fairyland goes, yeah. Scotty Young's your man. Yep. All right, man. I am man. Marvel, 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 Marvel. Marvel, Marvel. <laughs> Doctor Strange number one, another one of the number ones coming out from Marvel this month. Um, this is Mark Wade and uh, Jesus says, <laughs> Jesus says, the Jesus. <laughs> new spells, allies, and enemies in this new series from Mark Wade. And Jesus says, Sorcerer Supreme of the Galaxy. The Eye of, Amago, space, space, space. <laughs> the Eye of Agamotto <laughs> is closed. Dr. Stephen Strange has lost his connection to Earth's arcane power, and he can't wait to recover while nightmares press against the seams of our reality. Uh, Tony Stark offers a 21st century solution. When astral travel fails, try astronautical travel. Okay, enter Doctor Strange, Space Explorer Supreme. New spells, allies, and enemies. New new spells, allies, and enemies, new and old. New, new and old. Await oh, Strange Beyond the Stars, along with corners and secrets of the Marvel Universe never seen before here for the first. What the? Await oh, Strange Beyond the Stars, along with corners and secrets of the Marvel Universe seen here for the first time. Okay, that still doesn't make sense to me, but all right. Space is endless, but time is short. After years of threats, Steven's bill for magic use is coming down. <laughs> it's light there. I can't. Yeah. I thought it was pill. I was like, what? <laughs> makes even yeah, less sense. Does. Steven's bill for magic use is coming due. Who will come to collect? Who indeed? So, even though he's not Sorcerer Supreme, he's still able to access magic, I'm guessing. With new spells. I guess so. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the deal is. Yeah, I'm confused um, with what Marvel doing right here. Immortal Hulk, number one. There's new Marvel. Another. Again. Number one. Has a great creative team. Al Ewing and Joe Bennett. Yeah, that is great. Uh, Alex Ross cover art. That, that actually, I may buy that one. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Has a name. <laughs> Horror. 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 As a name. Horror. You'll n never notice the man. He doesn't like to be noticed. He's quiet. <laughs> Calm. Never complain. This is not me. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. If someone were to walk up and shoot him in the head, all he'd have to do is die. Uh, until night falls and someone else gets up again. The man's name is Banner. The horror <laughs> is the Immortal Hulk. That's actually a cool concept. I it like is. that. Yeah, I'm going to check um, that one out. Because, I mean, that's always been the thing that, you know, you really can't kill Banner because the Hulk won't let you. Right. Um, so it's Zahambe. 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 Um, okay, moving over to, I think this is, I, oh, IDW, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. You John, finally get some. John Byrne, Stowaway to the Stars, number one, special edition, written, drawn by John Byrne. Robots, aliens, and a spunky teenage girl. John Byrne explores a whole new way of storytelling, and is that, like, that sounds like uh, Lando's Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, if there's one person to write a spunky teenage girl, it'd be John Byrne. John Byrne, well, he, I guess Kitty Pride. So yeah, John that was a long time. ago. That was a long time ago. I think this is. A, I don't think this is a new. I think this is like an older story. It's something that they're redoing yeah. from IDW. Yeah. They've done that with a couple of his works. John Byrne explores a whole new way of storytelling in Stowaway to the Stars, where Mr. Byrne takes you on a journey through brand new worlds and galaxies with this beautiful series of full-page, full-color illustrations accompanied by a light, evocative science fiction storyline. I don't know. I, I appreciate Mr. Byrne's art, so I may check that out. Mr. Byrne? Mr. Byrne. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I do like his art. Yes. And if that's older stuff, then it's probably really, really good. All right. DC Comics gives you a big... Number one, Justice League. 
It's huge, huge. Justice League number one, Scott Snyder, Jim Chung. Beautiful art. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually, I think, one of the first really big things that Jim Chung's doing over at DC Comics. I don't think he's... No, yeah, this is, yeah, this is, I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than this one either. This is called The Totality, part one. A brand new era begins here. Uh, Snyder and Chung are going to launch the Justice League into the cosmos, shaking mystery that will draw out their most terrible foes. In, our, uh, in ways our heroes couldn't possibly imagine. In this debut issue, Martian Manhunter struggles uh, to protect the team from an incoming threat that will shatter the world as they know it, while a familiar face strikes out on a dark path. Okay. All right. But yeah, this, That's if you've big. been waiting to yeah, see Martian is. Manhunter back in the Justice League, yeah. he's finally there. This is all spinning out of the No Justice stuff. We've got a bunch of different Justice League teams coming out. Yes. Um, I'm moving over to Dark Horse for a minute. This is, uh, this is okay. This is one of the things that is weird tying into stuff on my side. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Sword Daughter number one, uh, Brian Wood, Mac Chater, Lauren Effie. Uh, the 40 swords came at night and murdered the entire village, save for two people, the infant Elspeth, and her grief-stricken father, Dag, setting off on a revenge quest that will span the width of Viking Age Europe. They find the key to repairing their damaged relationship lies in the swords that they carry. So, Vikings, um, I just happen to be wearing the Amon Amarth. <laughs> so, we've got Vikings here, and I happen to pick, well, my back issue. We'll, we'll get to that, and that also ties into the D-Day thing we were talking about earlier. Okay, it's weird. That's Mark. And all comes it's Mark. All right. Last up from DC Comics, we have Unexpected Number One. This one looks interesting too. Is this a one shot or is this a? No, this is. It's an ongoing. Ongoing. That's yeah. right. Steve Orlando, who uh, did a pretty uh, under the radar run on uh, Supergirl. Yeah. There, Ryan Suck and Carrie Nord. Man. Great art. Great art. Yeah, that's this is this is part of that whole group of thing where it's like the artists first that they've been spotlighting the artists uh, within the DC run. Yep. There, this is the aftermath of Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, the DC universe has been changed for uh, forever changed as new heroes are called out from the shadows, and this all amid this all is Janet Fowles, Firebrand, Firebrand, Firebrand. <laughs> <laughs> the name's Janet Faust. Firebrand. <laughs> Once a paramedic dedicated to saving lives, she must now start a, a fight <laughs> once every 24 hours to feed the conflict engine that's replaced her heart. But Janet's heart uh, isn't just a curse, it's a beacon. Drawing it's bacon. out. It's bacon. Bacon to draw me out. Drawing out yeah. both mysterious neon, uh, the mysterious neon, the unknown, and the seductive Melot. Bad Samaritan. <laughs> These are great names. Yeah, they are. This is like old Kirby stuff. <laughs> One of them wants to cut out her heart, the other wants to save it, but neither of them knows the true danger within, uh, hidden within that wall. Uh, oh, that will, sorry. I'm now getting to the the fading uh, that will kick off the superhero manhunt ranging from Thranagar <laughs> to the deepest hearts of the dark multiverse so wow that was hard to read when it's uh, yeah, it fading is. away like yeah. that it, it's at the most inopportune times it's not just like the word the or something it's, <laughs> yes. it's yeah. you know Thranagar <laughs> Thanagar Thanagar Thanagar. Yeah, no, that sound. I may pick that up too because that sounds pretty. Interesting. I like the and that's uh, Steve Orlando. Yeah, I it, like it, that. It sounds like wacky old Kirby type stuff to me. And just in case anybody was fretting over um, Supergirl being canceled, you know, Steve Orlando is Orlando is no longer on board. On board. <laughs> <laughs> but um, is it Mark Andreco that's taking over for it? Um, 
uh, and Kevin McGuire. Kevin McGuire, I think, yeah, yeah, is the creative right. team. Yes, that sounds but right. She's been saved and she's back. So. Yep, and she's going out into space with different outfits. I like the new outfit they had on the cover there. Yeah. Oh, she's got like a bunch cool. of different ones depending upon what kind of world she's on. Oh. So they were but it's picking back up with the regular numbering. It's not starting over with the number one. It's just skipping a month or so and then. Yeah. Unlike the up. Super Sons, which, which will is start with the number one and be a 12 issue series. series. Yeah, until they decide to keep it going. Yeah. Um, well, so there's that. Yep. Uh, I guess that's your little bit of comic book news. A little uh, bit. Tidbit. A bit. Uh, we are now going to go to our section here where we talk about our new comics, our old comics, and so I'm going to make you wait a little bit more okay. with your that's uh, fine. tying in there. And I will. It's uh, worth it. <laughs> worth it. And I will talk about the the number or the new comic that you can find on the shelf right now is Wicked and Divine number thirty six. It's kind of a weird one for me to choose because it's not the beginning of a story arc or anything, but it's kind of at this point in time within the series where they are revealing a lot of massive secrets that have basically been kept from the first issue. Uh, the book has to be getting close to its culmination point where uh, they may have a story arc or two more to go but with this you get to see uh, just who or what Baal really is you know the, the god Baal is he is he like the Egyptian god that his namesake yeah. uh, is his namesake or is he different plus you also get to see kind of this Aniki is she um, is she really the person behind everything, or is there someone else driving all this? Uh, you know, people who were once thought dead or, or found to be not dead, uh, just headless <laughs> or bodiless, actually. Okay. Is what it is. But there's there's a lot of craziness. Uh, Kieran Gillen just writes a great story. He plans plots out stories very well. Uber uh, phenomenal read in time it decides to come out, and uh, McKelvey's art. Is, is great. Uh, the the one thing that's that's crazy that uh, with this issue they go through, and you just do the six panel page for half the book showing kind of what's been going on over oh, the wow. centuries with the characters, cool, and how people have kind of figured out things right up till the end. But um, it looks like finally the, the the characters in the modern day are going to be able to do something about it. Okay. So. Awesome. Very good read. If you have not read Wicked Divine, pick up the trades. Get caught up on this series. Got all of them. Yes. Uh, if you have read it and fallen off, or you just have a collection sitting there, pick it up again and continue reading it because it is well worth it. Cool. Your turn. All right. Um, so, completing the the Viking trilogy theme today, which I really didn't even realize until. Uh, in, you know, just before we started the show, um, this is DC for me was not really about superheroes when I was growing up. Um, it was about war books, war anthologies, horror stuff, um, things like that, um, Tarzan fantasy, you know, fantasy stuff, things like that. Um, this one came out a little bit later. This was in October of '79. Okay, later than I thought. So, crap, I would have been in high school. <laughs> it is just. Um, in diapers. <laughs> in diapers. Um, so this is uh, All Out War number one, and the reason uh, I bought it originally was because of the Viking Commando. Um, this was uh, Robert Kaniger and George Evans created him, even though it's got a really cool Joe Kubert cover. Yeah, I was going to say that looks um, straight up Kubert. But it? yeah, this is another one of the anthology books. The first story is about the Viking Commando, and he was uh, fighting some Huns, which I'm not sure the Vikings ever did. But hey, Hun, what are you going to have? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a different thing if it would have happened in the South. This is very true. <laughs> it was Southern Norway. <laughs> It happened. So, Hun. Hey, Hun. Uh, so, um, he's fighting some Huns. Um, a Valkyrie mistakenly thinks he's dead. She tries to get him to Valhalla. Odin won't let him in because he's not really dead. So, instead, shoves him forward through time. Just happens to land on D Day. So, okay, there's the D Day thing. So, everything's all neatly tied together on my stuff. Um, 
and the first people he sees and they're speaking a similar language are the Nazis so he starts fighting the Nazis the Americans recruit him and uh, it gets continued in other issues I can't remember exactly how many issues this went but I don't think they ever finished his story completely hmm. um, but it's fun stuff it's wacky I mean it's a Viking fighting in World War II if you like you know war stuff that's I mean this all was right up my alley because of everything involved but, yep, that's all my stuff that all got tied together with the Viking and D-Day stuff. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to me that um, Marvel, before they really took over and, you know, reintroduced the superhero genre, had a lot of westerns yes. out. They had some... When they some, were Atlas, yeah. They, some war books that were had out. war books. They had horror, mystery, uh, romance, uh, jungle stuff. Yeah, monsters. And DC, it seems like some of their most prevalent and well thought of Western and war books were 70s almost. 70s, uh, 80s, yeah. So they they kind of did kind of the opposite yeah. there. Um, yeah. But that, that's that beautiful cover with that. Like I said, you can instantly recognize Joe Cute. Cooper. Oh, for sure. And he um, did, holy crap, he did like good chunk of their covers in the set, especially if it was war or fantasy or jungle stuff or whatever. I mean, it was going to be Joe Kubert doing right. the cover. Right. Besides just like them, you know, him doing tour, you know. Right, right. There's there's tons of it. Uh, well worth it. They need a good, uh, I call them autobiographies. You know, it needs to, I like it where they, they talk, give the biography, but they're also doing Interviews. the art, yeah. uh, the original art, I you mean, know, different I, things. I'd love one on Joe. As a companion, I would totally buy a book with just all his covers from yeah. the DC War books and, and stuff like that. Yeah, it I seems would. like they're too often just, uh, when they do those books, they just get random selections of stories and put them in there. And yeah. That's fine, but I, I like to actually read about sure. the people on yeah, top yeah, yeah. of it. Um, so they, they've done some killer ones. Uh, the woodwork there for Wallace oh, Wood is probably the uh, best one I've seen. But uh, I just I'd like to see a couple more of those guys that were you know out there. Senior uh, John Romita, Senior. Yeah, um, you're not going to get a Ditko one because I don't think you're going to hey, get any Ditko. He doesn't interviews do interviews. Yeah, he doesn't do interviews. <laughs> he is still a recluse. So yeah, and I don't know if if they have like a lot of his original artwork. The um, I, I, I would not sure. Well, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I would imagine Marvel has some of it at least, but I don't know about all of it or how much. Yeah, but it, I mean these guys. Their work is so prolific. They uh, the the thing I really like about getting to see uh, some of those original or, or the artwork, the original pieces is getting to see it pre colored, colored, which the the coloring and the the quality of the paper just yeah bleeds and degrades, and so you don't get to see just how talented these guys were because people talk about how much better the art is now. It's not really that much better. You, you can look at these guys and say they're really ahead of their time from just what some people might have been putting out there. You had a Joe Cuber. You had, uh, you know, whomever else coming out and, you know, Storenko giving you something that just was light years ahead sure. of everybody else. I mean, he, else. Kirby. Just the, yeah. the dynamics of Kirby and people complain that his art's too simple. The man was doing six books at yeah. a time. Yeah. And he would he could, I mean, slightly change up some uh, details there to with it. The, I mean, Joe Cuber, he, he founded a school that's still going yep. strong today. So yep. it says something about the man uh, being able to know his art and do his art. Now, I'm not uh, saying the art's well. not good today, okay? So don't jump on me. Yeah, right no, right. no, no. I'm, I'm just saying not, it's very deceptive. And these guys wouldn't be around if it wasn't for Cuber and Kirby and Basimus and guys like that. If you, if you want a cheap way of looking at it, find the uh, DC Showcase and the Marvel uh, Essentials just mm -hmm. where you can see the, the black and white yeah. of it because there, you can it's a see difference. There, it's a difference. there's a huge difference uh, and when you have like Laura Martin or one of the, the colorists these days that will go through when they do the touch ups on it sure. on the better quality paper it makes I mean, a world of difference too there's some, there, these books are pricey but IDW puts out some artists that's on the artist board the original artist board 
for guys like Kirby and Huber. Yeah. And, and it's just freaking amazing. Yeah. We, we went off on a different tangent, but yeah, I just yeah, love yeah. the no, Joe no, no, Cooper cover there. Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't <laughs> mind going off on that tangent at all. I'll talk about that stuff all day long. Absolutely. Uh, and it's one of those things, as you delve into comics, you start, you know, you read so much of the modern day stuff and you start looking backwards, and so you come across that. And uh, you can see a lot of these contemporary guys have that love of the, the old Absolutely. artists there. There's so all kinds of influence going on there. Yeah. So, uh, feel free to talk about that <laughs> within the video. Uh, that's like Mark said, we love to talk about it. Uh, go ahead, remember to do the, the, the things we always ask you to do. Like, share, subscribe, uh, comment on the books that are coming out this week. Lots of number ones yep. from Marvel. What are you going to be picking up? Uh, comment on uh, Wicked Divine or All Out War. Uh, have you read either of those? Are you enjoying Wicked Divine right now? Um, so, beyond that... Um, Anything else we need to add? No, I think that's it. Okay. Well, you know where to find us uh, in Shreveport, Louisiana, in Texarkana, Texas. We are Excalibur Comics, Cards, and Games. And uh, this is Talking Comics. We will see you next time. Bye.